the second to clear, setting a fastest lap four tenths quicker than anybody else. A brilliant debut victory then for the 18 year old in British super sport. After a full season of uh, trying, trying my best to you know, win races and try and get the championship wrapped up. It was just, it was awesome to cross the line on Sunday and you know, just the feeling of looking at pit wall and the boards like saying 2020 British champ, which is unbelievable. What's your name? Rory Skinner. What's your occupation? I am a full-time motorcycle apprentice at Skinner Motorcycles in Perth, PH2 ONG, Unit 1B, Glen Aaron Road. Good, isn't it? Rory Skinner is a 19-year-old superstar sensation in the making. He's been racing bikes since he was 12 years old on the big circuit. He actually started long before that on mini bikes. After winning the Super Sport Championship last year, he's now an official factory Kawasaki Superbike rider in the UK. FS3 Racing have got Rory Skinner and Lee Jackson on board the brand new Kawasaki ZX-10R for this year. We know how fast Rory is. The main people in the paddocks know how fast Rory is. It's up to Rory to deliver at each event. We're at Skinner Motorcycles this afternoon, um, joined by Mike Skinner, who's the father of Rory Skinner. And Mike, thank you very much for having us uh, at the, the shop. Um, you know, Rory is now a British Superbike racer, but we want to know is how did it all start? And ultimately, was it your doing or was it something that Rory wanted to get into? Firstly, hi, Donk. <laughs> um, it was uh, well, basically, as you know, I was I was racing up at Knockhill, and uh, Rory was always around, six months old, and he was sitting on the tank of my race bike. And uh, as as he got older, he was uh, always sort of there and thereabouts. Mm. At four years old, he said, "When can I start racing?" And uh, oh. hang on a minute, <laughs> you know. Um, and by the time he got to six, uh, we got my mini moto and. Started off at Alan Macintosh's Mini Motors. And it's, it's just grown from there, hasn't it? But, I mean, he got special dispensation to start at an early age on the big circuits, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did. He uh, went through Mini Motors and then went to the British Championship, second year in the Mini Motors, and uh, did that for th three years of British Mini Motors. And then he was basically, he'd won all he could win, and he was only 11. <laughs> uh, going into the next year so we're kind of at this crossroads where, where, where are we going to go don't really want to repeat that again so put a, put a letter together for Scottish Auto Cycle Union put it to them, could you get a dispensation this is what he'd done listed out all the championships he'd won I think by that time he'd won about 10 British championships yeah. so they had a meeting and they unanimously said yes we'd be doing them an injustice if we didn't yeah. give him a, a go at it. So gave Rory the op option of either a, an Aprilia 125, which they were riding, or something pretty different was taking an RS 125 GP bike, uh, the, the running gear chassis, and making an engine for it and modifying the frame and putting an engine in it, which is, you asked the differences, and I said, well, basically 125 is bigger and heavier, uh, the Grand Prix bike's lighter, it's more in line with what you've been riding. And he said, could we do that? So I struck up a deal with a friend who had uh, an old one in bits, got the bike, took an old RS50 that I had in, in the shop, <laughs> took the engine out, built it into an ATCC, and the rest of history, he went, he went racing on it. It was a proper home-built bike, and it, it, done him, it, done him, it done him a world of good. It got him onto the big circuits. And, and from then, I suppose, it, some racing in the British Championship, but behind us, you can see, or behind yourself, you can see the, the Red Bull rookie years. I mean, what were those years like? Because that's when it's, there must have been something start to click, you thinking, hang on here, the, you know, my boy's got something. Yeah, well, that, that all came about when he was riding in Super Teens. Um, he, uh, we applied for selection event. Mm -hmm. He was 12 at the time, and basically all through 2014, we had to each month accumulate what he'd been doing, race results, pictures, all different media things, pic uh, clippings out of any papers and stuff that he'd been given publicity from and send it all on to the staff at Red Bull. And as did, I think, I think there was 5,000 other applicants. Yeah. They all did that. 
and at the end of the year they they chose Rory and 112 I think it was that year applicants to go to Spain to try out for three days three or four days so we went out at the end of the, the season and uh, Rory just won super teams then we jumped on the plane the next week <laughs> and went out to the Red Bull selection event it was pretty nerve wracking it was at Guadax okay. drove in there and saw yeah. the knock hill <laughs> sign <laughs> which was nice and uh, we felt at home straight away so uh, Rory was pretty nervous I was a bit nervous did his uh, first day got selected through to the second mm -hmm. day that was great he was really nervous so we had a wee chat and calmed him down and he just went out did his stuff and you know that that uh, event at the end of the day everybody's waiting all the kids are waiting all the parents are like really nervous and then you, to hear his name getting cried out was just amazing so that was the step into Red Bull MotoGP yeah. Rookies Cup you know and uh, that whole year that first year was just fantastic you were at the GP paddocks you were around all the, the riders he'd watched at the top level um, Rory knew some of the, the riders uh, Danny Kent um, uh, well, Scott Redden so some there's other riders I, I, their names forget just now, but um, they met them around the paddock and they were all really really nice. Sam yeah, Rose, yeah. Sam Rose was there. Spent a lot of time with Rory, helped them, and uh, Danny Kent was really nice with Rory. He'd take him out on the back of the scooter to go around the circuits right, okay. and uh, just talk about different corners. He was really really nice actually. And uh, Scott was there, so Scott said hello. But Scott, he's a really nice guy, quite inward and he's got his own focus so it was nice just to be around but yeah. you know he was doing his own thing yeah. which was good you know um, but he got selected into the second year and it was more of the same and then again for a, a final third year just an amazing amazing time yeah. you learned so much and, and so much that was really the, the, the kind of thing that started to launch him forward you know from there we know that he was in the Red Bull Rookies. He then came back and he won the British Talent Cup, which you can see the leathers for on the wall there. I mean, Racing Steps Foundation leathers at the back, they were always a, a, a big part of not just Rory, but a, a, lot, of, a lot of riders, you know, yeah. including their very own John McPhee. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Racing Steps came about exactly at the same time as the Red Bull. Uh, so they almost ran, well, they ran in parallel. Um, it was a bit of, uh, it was a bit of juggling around actually getting that to happen because uh, the contracts for both clashed and Racing Steps Foundation, fantastic organisation for what they were set up to, to do. Yeah. Graham Sharp, the, the founder, um, we can't thank him enough for giving Rory the opportunity that he had in Spain. Uh, basically took him, paid for him, paid for me uh, to travel out there put us in accommodation, put him in a team, team ran for Rory, uh, and they took, did the Junior World Championship uh, for three years. And, well, two years Junior World Championship, first year was RFME because he was, wasn't old enough to be in yeah. the Junior World Championship. But that itself was fantastic footing mm -hmm. to break him into that scene. <laughs> Shake off the 
Forget that he's only 19. You know, we've known him at Knock Hill for, for what seems like forever. You know, he's been the wee boy that come up with his dad, and he was away playing at the play park on the swings. Yeah, which doesn't <laughs> seem uh, like that long. Racing at that time, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't seem like that long ago <laughs> to me. You know, um, but obviously we know him, we went to the world scene. But then, it, you know, things change. Unfortunately, the, the Grand Prix thing didn't work out. You come back, you had a year in Superstock in in, in Scotland, which went really well with Kokodi Kawasaki. Yeah. But yeah. you know. Last year, the the British Super Sport Championship. I mean, what a year! What a year for you, as a dad and Rory as a, as a son. You know, you went racing together, yeah, with, with Apple Yard. Yeah. But ultimately, I mean, what was that like for you going up and down the country, coming home with big trophies that, every week? That was the first year where, uh, in a long time, that Rory was really, really happy in his racing. Mm -hmm. Really happy. He had a great team around him. The the such good guys they all had Rory's best interest at heart they worked for him not he wasn't going into a team saying this works you do it this way it was the exact opposite yeah. and they just worked really hard to give Rory what he needed um, and for me they just welcomed me in with open arms and yeah. you worked with them all the way through you know him better than anyone come and work fix the bikes so I was one of his mechanics and it was it was it was an honour for me to do that in a such a, a good team that have been there and at the top for so long. Mm -hmm. um, Robin himself, I can't say enough about Robin. He's just such a nice lad. Um, he's so the whole family is so passionate about it, but Robin especially, he's just so down to earth, yeah. and uh, he just well, he obviously saw something in Rory like like I had and. Uh, Many others, so they, he just he, he helped us out in the end, and uh, it was just a fantastic year for him last year. That was an amazing year, and hopefully you managed to get one of the the many watches that you got from uh, the pole positions. Oh yeah, the watches, yeah. yeah. Um, I I I did tint. He said, "You don't wear a watch, Dad." Yeah, and that was the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So, Apparently, <laughs> I was told you hinted, but you didn't actually ask. So you, you, oh, we, right, we okay. could maybe get that after here. <laughs> I'm really, really happy to be given the opportunity by uh, Kawasaki UK and Darren and Nigel at FS3. It's, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to getting out on the, on the new ZX10 and, uh, you know, just I've seen it in the flesh once, the road bike, and it, it looks awesome. And, you know, seeing Johnny Ray and Alex, Alex Lowe's on it, um, you know, they've, they've done a good job so far in, in world superbike testing. But to, to be in superbikes is going to be awesome and to, you know, the provisional calendar says we're coming here to Knock Hill, which is, uh, for me, it was awesome because I can't wait to be out in front of all the home crowd. Nigel Snook from FS3 Racing joins us now and let's find out a little bit more about the boy wonder. He's back there in the garage. Nigel, Rory Skinner, he's a sensation, he's a superstar. And how is he fitting in at FS3 Racing? Well, the first thing is we've got to go easy on the superstar thing and not overdo the hype. Because learning to ride a superbike fast on the limit isn't the work of a moment. So he's working very closely with his new crew chief, Matt Llewellyn, gradually getting up to speed, but he's a sensible lad, 
He's confident. He's not appearing to be cocky. Um, if he becomes a little bit full of himself, we'll still tone it down. We've got a two-year deal with him. He's got lots of races, lots of miles to run. So he's got high hopes, we've got high hopes, but we'll take it one step at a time. We look forward to seeing how he does progress through you, and I think he's, he's in with a good team, he's in with a good bunch of guys, yeah. so the best of luck. Thanks very much. We can't be putting pressure on him to be expecting to be on the podium anytime soon, but he'll be troubled in the top ten, that's for sure. Nigel, thank you. Pleasure, Duncan. Thanks for the sunshine. Always for you, mate, always for you. <laughs>
Oh, I mean, I think today's put us in really good stead already. It'll be nice, nice to have another day tomorrow, you know, sessions tomorrow to uh, just try different things again and see where we're at. But, um, you know, I think for, for here, I think I'm as ready as I'll ever, ever will be. It'll be good to get in a racing environment, especially on the superbike. That'll be another learning experience for me. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it'll be good. It'll be, be one of those things that I'm really excited to be racing in front of the, the home crowd at Knock Hill. Fingers crossed we can get the crowds in, which I think we might be able to. So, you know, it'll be... Uh, Really nice to be in front of everybody at home. We will keep our fingers crossed. Now, we spoke with Nigel, and he says, look, there's no pressure on Rory. You know, I got around for calling you a superstar, which in my eyes, you're a superstar. But he says, no, take that away. He's under no pressure. We want him to, to learn and, and get used to the Superbike and the team. And then I mentioned you've got a very experienced crew chief, Matt Llewellyn, a man who knows how to win in the British Superbike Championship, knows how to make the best out of a young rider. What's your relationship with him just now? Yeah, well, as you said, Nigel. Nigel, I mean, <coughs> Nigel had been saying there was no pressure, and that is completely correct. He's uh, there's no pressure coming from the team whatsoever. They're just letting me do the job that I can do, and we're just we've got our own program, testing program, so we're not getting caught up in lap times or where we are in, in the in the timesheets. It's just about making sure I'm comfortable on the bike and trying different things on the superbike. So, uh, yeah, you know, working with Matt has been pretty awesome. He's uh, me and him have clicked really well so far, and each each time I come in and debrief to him he's understanding how I work and I'm understanding how he works you know it's the it's a little bit of a lingo in racing that um, make a rider and a crew chief click and you know now we're getting there closer and closer so it's uh, yeah it's really good and it's difficult when you enter a new team because you have to learn everybody but the guys that are working on your bike uh, obviously building the relationships key we've got Ali Grant here who we all know from uh, from riding in Scotland that must be nice having a, a local almost friend spanning the bike yeah, well, you know, Ali's dad actually paints my helmet, so it's uh, there's another connection there. You know, today we got Darren on the spanners. Uh, I don't think the whole team's quite too sure about that one, but uh, you know, it's uh, usually I got Bear there on the bike, and he's he's great. And uh, you know, him and Ali work great as a team, and I'm really enjoying having someone Scottish on my side of the garage too. And we should mention that Darren, one of the, the guys who runs the team with Nigel, so you, you've got a bit of a boss working on the bike. Yeah, I was just joking, so you, you know, I hope he doesn't watch this and think I've taken it too seriously. But no, that, it's good having Darren working on the bike as well. It's, uh, it's a nice, friendly environment in the team, and uh, I'm really enjoying working with them. So there you go, that's a roundup for day one. 39 days till the Bennett's British Superbikes at Knock Hill. We'll catch up with Rory tomorrow, and it'll be 38 days to go. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Duncan. And then we come up to where we are now. You know, he's gone into the FS3 Kawasaki, the official UK Kawasaki team yeah. with Darren and Nigel, which is a fabulous team for him to be in. There's no pressure they're saying on him. No. But then the first BSB meeting is Oakland Park and you're not there. How yeah. was that for you? How did you cope with that? That was, uh, it was a strange one. Uh, obviously, Rory's mum just been in for sort of double hip operation, quite major surgery for her. And I needed to be here for her um, so I, it was different I'd never really been in that situation only a couple of times I'd been in that situation before when he was racing in Spain I didn't go um, I would say probably more stressful because I had the, the laptop there with the the sector times and you're watching that and quite up before you know and through practicing sessions and stuff so that's all I had and I was listening to the circuit radio but then that would cut out and uh, you think you should be there by now. <laughs> so your stomach is churning all the yeah. time. Time it came to the actual races, I watched I had the television on, the laptop beside me. I'm watching the laptop sector times, watching the race and could see them just just in the background. And I thought, well, oh, this is good. It was really nice. It was it was it was different. It mm -hmm. was nice, it was quite relaxed, but still a little bit you know, nervous. Really. Ultimately, you would have rather have been there. You'd have been a, mo a lot calmer, Dad. Without doubt. Yeah, but, yeah. Because but these things are these things are big bikes. They're big, fast, hard bikes to ride. Yeah, I know. I know. I'd love to have been there for his first meeting, but at the same time, you know, he's he's nineteen now. He's been around it pretty much all his life. He knows what to do, and you know, I don't really need to be there for him now. I'm almost at the end of the phone. Although the signal was really bad, mm -hmm. so it was another thing. I couldn't get to him. When I, when I wanted to speak to him, I couldn't get him on the phone, so that was that was a bit difficult as well. But he had a fantastic weekend for his for his first meeting on a superbike. Yeah, I think everybody was just really happy with how it went, including himself. So as a father, as a dad, I mean, how proud are you of where he is now? I mean, he's in the garage. 
you yeah. working away, servicing bikes for you, but how proud are you of Rory? Well, you know, uh, as a parent, you know, you just want to help your kids do the best they can and see them see them succeed at what they do. Mm. And he's been doing that pretty much all his life. I'm just, you know, we just take it as it comes every day. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm mega proud. Yeah. Um, just glowing with pride, really. Um, he just keeps delivering. And, you know, we, we, we keep him pretty grounded. Uh, <laughs> trying to, if he, I've seen that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if he, uh, you know, after a, week, a race week meeting or weekend of that, you know, maybe the, the Sunday night, Monday, he'll sort of relax and, yeah. you know, get really happy. But then Tuesday comes and then it's just back into the routine and work away, start again yeah. and uh, take it as it comes. Mike, it's been great to sit here in this lovely, lovely room where Rory's got some of his memorabilia. Let's hope that you can add to it over the years. But um, the Thanks best luck. And the good thing is round two, not kill. Absolutely. So he knows that place. And, Home round. And you'll be there for that. Absolutely. I, I won't be uh, anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, good. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Doc. Yeah. So, Rory, is this the best gym in the world? I'd say so, Duncan. You know, well, it works for me. Everybody, every rider's got a, something that works for them. And for me, I just enjoy cycling up hills and coming back down on my mountain bike. It's I, just uh, what I enjoy doing. I've got to say, the jump, the jumps are an added, like an added bonus, or like an extra little dessert, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Not just the jumps, to be honest. It's any trail for me. Just it makes it a bit more enjoy, enjoyable. You get to be able to ride up the hill, put the working on the way up to. Uh, you know, enjoy it on the way down, so it kind of makes the, the training a bit more fun. Be a fan of Supercross with the big flicks and the whips and the knack-knacks or the can-cans, whatever they call them? <laughs> Try and watch it when I can. I'm certainly nothing like that on a motocross bike, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm probably, probably jump bigger on my mountain bike than I would on a motocross bike. But... I don't think they're called can-cans. I think that's a dancing thing. <laughs> I'm not too sure. <laughs> Rory, next round of the BSBs at Knock Hill. We're going to have a big long chat about your racing career. But how excited are you for the British Superbikes at Knock Hill? I can't wait, Duncan, to be honest. You know, last year I was so gutted not to have had, not to have had the Knock Hill round. It was, uh, it was such a shame, really. Um, but, you know, this year to be, to be back out, even in front of a, of a reduced fan base, it's going to be great. You know, first, first time there in a Superbike, it's, uh, it's going to be great. We've talked a lot uh, about the bike before you actually raced it, but you've now done a race at Oldham Park. What's your thoughts on the machine over a race distance and how are you holding up? Ah, you know, it's, it's certainly certainly different for the 600, that's for sure. It's uh, so much power underneath it and uh, the ride style is so different. You know, the guys I'm racing against as well are at the top of their game. They've been in Superbike class for a good few years now. So, you know, to be to be in the Superbike class is, is great and I'm learning something every lap I'm riding it. Now, we caught up with your dad and um, I've got to say it was a lovely interview your dad gave us. I think he was about to get a little bit emotional towards the end of it when he talked about how proud he is of you. I mean... How instrumental has he been in your racing career? No, you know, my dad's been there from the very beginning. You know, even before I started racing, he was racing himself. So I've always been in the Knock Hill paddock, as you know. I've always been in the Scottish paddock and always been around bikes. So, you know, that, without dad, I wouldn't be where I am today. I've got no doubt about that. He sacrificed so much for me and so has my mum as well. You know, they both put a lot, a lot, um, a lot behind them to put, to put me first, which, you know, I'm really grateful for. And without them, I most definitely wouldn't be where I am today. Alton Park was round number one for the BSB and Dad wasn't there with you. you. You know, you were there alone, it was just you and your girlfriend, Abby. Did that feel strange? Were you in constant communication with him back home? Yeah, I was trying to keep in contact with him as much as I could, but I mean, I think as you probably found out at Alton Park as well, the, the phone signal was pretty awful. So I'd try calling him in between sessions, but my phone wouldn't actually reach him. So, you know, it was good. Abby was like my personal assistant at the weekend. She was uh, making sure I was doing all my phone calls and making sure everything was... Uh, all, all as it should be. So uh, yeah, it was weird not having dad there. You know, my first superbike ride, I would have quite liked to have had him there, but he was back home making sure mum was all right. Just come, she'd been in hospital getting a double hip operation. So, you know, he's got to, he's got to look after mum. Now, a lot of riders use the gym for their fitness, uh, but you use this as your fitness, these bikes here. I've got an e-bike for tonight. Uh, Rory, you've got what I thought was an e-bike, which turns out isn't an e-bike, but you could still go up the hill as quick as I did on this. Um, but how much of this do you do during the week? I try to get on my mountain bike as much as possible. You know, obviously in Scotland, we're, we're blessed with good weather all the time. So, uh, you know, uh, I can get out as much as I can. I'm pretty pretty grateful for where I live. You know, Dunkel's just down the road. Canoe Hill is obviously in Perth itself. So 
I've got a lot of opportunity to go riding. I've got a lot of great places around me. So, uh, you know, uh, suffer on the way up to, uh, to enjoy it on the way down. But at the end of the day, it's training and it's uh, what I enjoy doing. So it doesn't feel like training as much as maybe what it should do. You do, you've got lovely places to cycle and look at that beautiful view of Fife you've got there as well out over the back of us. It's, uh, you definitely are blessed, but we caught up with you earlier on in the garage, you know, working with your dad. You know, you're, you said, look, I'm just the apprentice, he's, he's the main mechanic, but you know, you're actually somebody that does get their hands dirty and is that something you enjoy doing? Yeah, I mean, I've always been around the workshop. It's been a family business that for, for many years now. I can't actually remember how many years off the top of my head, but it's been there ever since I can remember. So. You know, I've always been about about the shop and all about the business. So, being being there just seems normal to me. It's yeah. just it's it's natural, along with racing as well. So I've, I've picked up things from dad over the years, and you know now since I've left school, got done my hires, done my national fives, and uh, moved on to working at Skinner Motorcycles. So uh, you know, dream job there. But uh, no, I mean it's great working at Skinner Motorcycles gives me a good. Um, a good background for when it goes to racing. I can understand what the bike's doing in a more mechanical way. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's an advantage or not, but it's certainly something that I might have over other riders. You're only 19 years old. You know, it's 19, I've known you since you were around about this site. You've, you know, you grew up very, very quickly, but 19 years old, already in the BSB, with these guys here, FS3 Racing. Now, you've got a two year deal out of it, which is amazing for a young rider. No pressure, just get on with it. And what's Nigel and Darren's take after round one? You know, the team are brilliant. As you said, I've got a two-year deal with them, so there is absolutely no pressure for this season. It's just going out, enjoying myself, and learning how the bike works, and learning, learning how to ride a superbike, really. Nigel and Darren and, and my crew chief, Matt, and, you know, everybody in the team are really happy with my performance at round one. They were, there was, there was no pressure from them, so it was just for me to go out, do what I could do, and, you know, to bring home three-point scoring results was, uh, for me, a, a really good achievement, because I know there's a lot of riders and superbikes that, battle for, for points scoring results for, for a long part of their career. So to have our first weekend, three races, three points, three points scoring results, it was, uh, it was great for me. Do you fancy going down the hill? Do you fancy having a bit of bike time? Is it about time you head off and, uh, and catch some big air? I think so, Duncan. I'd quite like to see a bit of air underneath your wheels, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not. Rory, thanks very much. We'll uh, let's jump on the bikes and go. Sounds good to me. I've enjoyed myself, Rory. It's been good fun. I've, uh, I've experienced things on the bike that I've not done since I was about 17 years old, I think. And watching you, you're just amazing. You really are. The control and the skills, great. Thank you, Duncan. Not a problem. Shall we do a wheeling contest now? I do. All right, okay. There's no point showing off now. Put it down. Put it down.
there was a manoeuvre with your teammate Lee Jackson where in the commentary box everybody kind of winced as you went I think round outside of Lee into turn one yeah I saw a gap and I went for it so uh, it paid off this time and that was a pretty good move to be honest and tomorrow looking ahead tomorrow you do start in the front row of the grid is there anything you do that changes for your preparation you know Darren Fry said at Holton Park actually said to him I'm a little bit nervous I don't get nervous so front row start how's that going to take you I'll let you know after the race tomorrow, Duncan. I'm not really sure. I'll just uh, I'll go for it and I'll see what happens. The race will be what happens. So what will be will be. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm super happy with today so far. That's been my weekend already. So for me, it's just the rest is a bonus. Emotional on the cool down lap coming in. Yeah, a little bit. Even though we got reduced fans, it was just nice to see everybody cheering. And uh, yeah, I got back to the garage, everybody clapping, and yeah, almost a tear, but not quite. That's a mega congratulations. Go and get yourself something healthy for your tea, Rory. We'll catch you tomorrow. And good luck. Cheers, Dunk. FSD Kawasaki, Rory Skinner, um, we've got to say, completely sensational. I felt a bit emotional in the commentary box watching him. I've known this kid since he was this height, as we said earlier on. And he almost, you know, he was he was in there with the big guys. He was at the front and he starts on the front row tomorrow, which is uh, which is really impressive, really impressive for the kid from Perth. I wonder if Darren Fry will come and have a quick word or Nigel here. Who can I have? We'll, we'll, we'll take Nigel. Nigel, if you pop out the front just now, please. Thank you very much. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Well, first of all, we've got to, we've simply got to ask you about Rory Skinner because he blew our minds today. What, what did you think? Well, when we were talking, when we were up here testing, we said we had to be a bit careful not to get overexcited, and that was the message of the day. You gave me a row. Mm. But you know, the boy did good. Um, we started using the X-Tire because we used the Zero when we were here. So that gave them a little bit more that we had in our pocket and he made good use of it. Um, you could say you took advantage of a couple of mistakes by other riders, but you've got to be there to take advantage of those mistakes. No, we were very impressed. The best bit of the weekend so far has been, you know, we gave him a little clap when he came in and the smile on his face. It was like all his birthdays and Christmases. But he rode well and tomorrow he starts on the front row. And if we get a little bit of your moisture, I know. Nigel, please, moisture. No, we were threatening rain today and the rain never come. You know. It's been absolutely beautiful today, I have to say. But if it were moist tomorrow, he, he at least knows where not to go on the track as much as where to go. So he's excited for a good race, but I'm just delighted. I think it's probably common knowledge now that he's been suffering a bit with arm pump. So we're... He's having a little chop on Monday to um, hopefully cure that for the rest of the year and beyond. But no, it was lovely to see, wasn't it? And all you, you know, who you've seen him, you've all seen him grow up. And there he is doing it, you know, fantastic day, really. It was emotional for us, so thank you very much for giving us a bit of your time. I know, I think Darren's brought you your, your dinner in there, so Nigel, thank you very much. Thank you. for me was, was an awesome race really to get P5 in my, to my, my fourth superbike race ever I was over the moon to uh, be able to see the leader of the whole race I was uh, pretty blown away by that you know today starting at P3 in the grid I'm, I'm super excited for the race it's, uh, it's going to be pretty close and uh, yeah it gives me a good opportunity to be back up with the front group I'll see what happens I'm not really expecting anything but uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it Finished in the bank race two of the weekend here at Notting Hill and a flying start again for Christian Tucker Caddy and Christian in ahead of Dan Buckman. Can be attacks again, elbows are over, they come up the hill at 270 miles per hour. And the kids again here comes Rory Skinner. Skinner squeezes on the middle of the McCamps Yamaha. Skinner goes through. And uh, at the head of the field, what a race going on. It's Danny Bogan who takes the race with him. Second place for Skinner, third for the time for the next two the end of the field, back on top. 
at the front, he's the way for MS3 Kawasaki. And then he goes for it underneath Christian in into the hairpin. Skin has now been drawn back to it, suffering for a bit of arm pump. And that means that Danny Buffett, having just punted his way through at Clark's, takes victory. Yeah, summarise up the man who's standing next to us today. Um, I don't know about you, I felt quite emotional through the second part of the second race. I felt emotional since we got here, whenever it was, Friday morning. Rory's done a great job. We always knew that, all things being equal, this would be his weekend. And he'd start to prove to people who might be saying, mm, it's a superbike. Uh, but I think he's exceeded probably his own expectations, but I'll let him talk for himself. Um, his dad actually is the most confident person in the string, uh, string, uh, uh, Skinner camp. He's absolutely convinced of his son's talent and he's very generous in the fact that we've given him the environment to perform in. And as I said, I think in one of the Eurosport interviews, it's not just, you know, we're all on the bike with Rory. You, you know, you're never, we're all on, the whole garage is on the bike with Rory. Um, oh, Nigel's in the road here, he's just, just quickly moving the... That's okay. A little bit of temporary removal. We're all on the bike with Rory. He's getting on really well with Matt Llewellyn, his crew chief. We've got good mechanics, so when he gets on the bike, he's not worried about what he's getting on, and he knows it's going to work for him. He's, he, gives us, he gives the crew great feedback, so we don't want to blow too much smoke in his direction because it's only one race weekend, and there's another, what is it, nine to go. And uh, we've said, there'll be days when it clicks, there'll be days when it's harder, but you learn more on the days when it's harder, funnily enough, don't you? Yep. Um, and, you know, we didn't have a hard weekend at Alton Park, but, you know, it didn't, it didn't come easy, but Rory put his head down, scored points in every race, learnt a hell of a lot. Uh, we're now running the softer tyre. We were on the slightly harder tyre at Alton Park, so that's given him a little more of an edge but he's used the tools that are available to him really well, Duncan, so we're impressed. He's in demand, isn't he? And that's a good thing, but are you worried? <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, what a weekend. He's mega. You know, he's he's a bit gutted, actually, you know, but I said to him, it's one of those, you've got to look at that second race as well, and you've got to say, well, were we unlucky it wasn't stopped a lap before, or were we actually lucky it stopped when it did because he was suffering with his arm so bad. Yeah, how bad were they? How bad? How bad were the arms? Bad, yeah. bad, bad, bad. I saw him shake his head over the line about four laps before that and I thought, here we go. And then about two laps later, he sh and nobody else saw it in the garage, I was like, he shook his head. I saw it from over there with yeah. a pair of binoculars. <laughs> and then he shook it again about two laps later and I thought, ah. You know, if it was a tyre, there'd be an arm in his side like that. But you yeah. can't, you can't point to your arm, really. You know, unless you point to the other one. I mean, he's down to Manchester tomorrow for the operation. It sounds like there's going to be a queue of BSB riders. Actually, there's about four of them all lined up tomorrow evening for uh, operations on their arms. But mate, let's get him fixed now. You know, we've got a long season still to go. Mike Skinner, not from the streets. Uh, it's great to see. Uh, it's, I don't know about you, but I, that was difficult through that second race. It was always tears as a lump in my throat. And I'm his dad, you're his dad, you know? <laughs> yeah, second race, well, the first race, sorry, um, I saw the fastest lap and I, I welled up a little bit, I controlled myself. Um, I, I, loved, I loved watching it, it was just amazing. Yeah. I was there with him, just trying to stay calm and on, on it. I think the whole circuit was riding that bike with him, to tell you the truth. Every spectator there, when he, when he made a move at the hairpin, I looked for the, at the grandstand. It's not very busy because only a thousand people, but you could see all the arms yeah, in there. A lot of movement about, yeah. Yeah, we're all rooting for him. He, he came in yesterday and he said uh, it was amazing going around the circuit. He said, unfortunately, there's not as many spectators as I would like to have here. But he said the ones that were there were just waving and waving flags and everything for him. But it just felt really good. Rory, congratulations. Finish up how you were going on there. And what, what have you been given from Eurosport? I've been given, the, as presented by my dad, the Bennett's Rider of the Round at Knockwell Round 2 with a majority vote, which, you know, is very touching that everybody's thought that I rode a great weekend. So, yeah, very thankful for that. Congratulations. We had a quick word with your dad. He says he's going to go home and have a glass of red wine. What are you doing tonight? 
probably go home and have a glass of water. <laughs> Do some press ups. <laughs> Or maybe not, maybe not. No. <laughs> I think my arms have had enough abuse this last two days. Well, this is another couple of trophies because in Skinner Motorcycles in Perth, you've got all the super sport ones. Another couple to go up on that same mantelpiece. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I'll probably need to go up tomorrow and give them a little polish as well, all these super sport ones. But yeah, another two to add, hopefully the first of many. But we'll see. It's a long season and uh, there's some fast boys in this superbike class, so we'll see if we get on. Incredibly proud of you, Rory. Thank you very much. Good luck for the rest of the year. Well done. We'll have a quick word with one of the ultimate legends himself. Shaky Burn. Um, Can't be talking about me, surely. Well, I've not, I've not seen you all weekend, but I want you to, forever, forever, social media people, sum up Rory Skinner's weekend, please. I just did to him, actually. I know you. Uh, that doesn't help you guys, but I just said to him that um, superbikes are, are difficult things to ride, um, and the faster you go on them, the harder they become to ride. But watching Rory today, um, with the bike set quite soft, still a little bit like a super sport bike, but the precision in which he rode with today, uh, under the pressure that he was under from, let's face it, the, the best guys in the country on superbikes, um, was just incredible. You know, I never saw, I don't think I saw a single mistake. And when you see the bike dancing around and moving about, you know, in the change of direction, it looked a little bit lively because it's so soft. And I understand why it's soft to try and bring him on and build his confidence and stuff. But never once was he offline. And uh, I thought it was a pretty incredible performance. I said to him, do you know what? Go home tonight, watch that race, look at it, learn from it, and take that forward. Because unfortunately for Rory now, a lot of pressure will arrive when he gets to Brands Hatch. Um, you know, he needs to he needs to show everybody that it wasn't just a home round flash in the pan thing. And I don't think it is, not for one minute. I think the kid's immensely talented and uh, I really look forward to seeing his progress going forward. FS3 Racing, Rory Skinner joins us at Knock Hill. And Rory, this is kind of almost where it all started all those many years ago. The Knock Hill Play Park, the famous Knock Hill Play Park. Um, let's look at your Superbike season so far. Post Knock Hill, it was an ultimate high. How has your season gone since here? Yeah, you know, since coming to the Knock Hill round here at the, at the start of the season, you know, it was great coming away with two podiums and uh, three top five results. I was mega happy. But uh, yeah, I ended up going on the Monday straight after Knock Hill, going down to Birmingham, or Manchester actually, to uh, get my arm sliced open and get the arm pump surgery done, which you know was instantly better. I had 10 days recovery and then straight to Brands Hatch and put it on the front row again. So yeah, I mean this season it's just kind of been a learning curve. I've been going to all these tracks and just trying to trying to learn where I'm going on a superbike and understand how the track reacts to a superbike. So you know, I've just been chipping away at it, the team have been really great, they've been supporting me all the way and uh, yeah, you know, just there at Silverstone at the weekend, we had some some good top 10 results again. And just, you know, the last race got just kind of let down a bit with, with a dodgy tyre through no fault of anybody's. It was just uh, just a shame about that. But yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed my season so far. It's just been such a such a massive learning curve for me. Did you set yourself any personal goals in the winter coming into 2021? No, and I, well, I didn't really. I just wanted to be inside the points every round, and you know, battling for a top ten. And I've I've blown away every single one of my goals by getting the podiums here at Knock Hill and putting on pole as well. For my rookie season, that was just like unbelievable. So to have, to have done that, I'm I'm mega happy. And it was just like a case after Knock Hill, I was just about enjoying myself through the season because I already showed to everybody that I've I've got the pace to run with the front guys in BSB and to be one of the best riders in a, in the championship, which is regarded as one of the strongest domestic series in the world. So. Yeah, you know, after a knock kill round, it, it did do wonders. There was a crazy amount of media coverage and, uh, you know, any media coverage is good. And it was just, uh, it was nice to have done it at home. And it still rolls on, this media work that you've got to do. You know, we're always grateful whenever you come here. You always spend a little bit of time for the knock kill media team. So as a, a group of guys, we, we're, we're fans as well. You know, we're fans of bike sport, but you're moving into the last the last phase of the championship. The showdown starts. You're not in the showdown, but you know you you must be delighted with how it's gone. You've narrowed the gap to your teammate all the way through the year. That you know the the gap has come down to you know sometimes it's tenths of a second now between yourself and Lee. Uh, from a team point of view, what's Nigel and Darren saying? What the, what are the bosses saying? The team have just been so supportive all season. You know, there's never been a, a bit of pressure at all from them. They've just told me to go out and do what I can do and not not think about it too much. You know, it's always nice to be up and close to Lee because he's an experienced rider on a superbike and he's been with the team. This is his second year now with FS3 on a superbike. So, 
to be where I am, I'm 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 really happy. And uh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't have a better team to be honest. And you know, it's always nice speaking to you guys, the Knockhill Media team. You've always looked after me for the years and years of me being about this paddock. You've you've all been about and seen me too. So it's uh, it's always nice to come back and uh, see all you guys. And we jokingly said at the beginning, this is where it all started, but this is where it all started. When Rory Skinner was taking part in the KMSC bike races, we'd be doing the prize given at the, the bottom cafe and bar, and where's Rory? Where's Rory? He's won a trophy, always in the swings at the swing park. So this is generally your spiritual home, but thank you very much. Best of luck for the remainder of the season, and we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you, Duncan. And just to add, I was, I was 11 when I was doing that, so, you know, you can let me off with that one. I think we will. Thanks, Rory. Thank you. Cheers.